Does anybody remember these things? These electronic word processing typewriters that were produced in the mid to late 80s and through much of the early and somewhat later 90s up until about 1997 or 8 or so. These were sort of last gasp for the good old typewriter to stay alive and companies like Smith Corona and Brother Industries both made them. Some of them were just fairly simple typewriters that really acted the part of a typewriter more than anything else but oftentimes had the ability to store files for later retyping in some kind of hopefully non-volatile memory or they could function as a simple typewriter. And then some of them, like this one, took the concept a lot further and were actually what typewriters wanted to be if they could be computers. This one's fairly unique because many of the ones that I'm familiar with integrate either a matrix style or daisy wheel printer and this one, a Brother WP7550J inkjet word processor, is of course inkjet based. And I found this kicking around at a garage sale for about two dollars. Some of these things were almost computers in and of their own right and had little applications. And this one is a good example of such a thing. Now this thing is driven, although Brother is a Japanese company, it was assembled in the US and this thing shows a lot of Japanese influence on its internal design despite the fact that it was made here in the US. In particular, almost every logic chip on the board is sourced from a Japanese company. This thing's central microprocessor is a 32-bit Hitachi H8300 series microcontroller which um, has a memory management unit on board and a number of integrated peripherals and a system timer and a clock generator and all kinds of things like that. Given that it has a memory management unit and a pretty decent, if you know, by the standards of microcontrollers, 16 megabyte memory ceiling, I suspect that the enterprising hardware hacker could probably figure out how to get a copy of Linux running on this thing. Really the only crippling limitation to the H8300, according to its data book, is its rather limited, um, its rather limited ROM or program memory addressing capability but I suppose you could always build a simple bootstrapper and put it on a ROM chip. Anyway, this thing's program programming consists of two ROM chips of fairly small capacity, although I don't remember exactly how big they are. Despite its size, it uses an external power brick. The display, because it has programs and applications, everything from a simple typewriter on up to a spreadsheet and even a rudimentary kind of publishing program for desktop publishing, this thing's display is external. I'll talk about that later. It has a serial port for an external modem, so you could actually go online to a bulletin board system back in the day with this thing. And then over on the other side here, for document storage and uh, clip art disks and things like that, it has a disk drive. And this is a pretty conventional Panasonic disk drive hooked up to a pretty conventional PC compatible disk controller. Even so, a lot of these things end up using proprietary disk formats that regular PCs won't read without help. And so if you have data that's stuck on one of these things, sometimes you have to buy the manufacturer's conversion kit, hire a conversion service, or try a disk editor utility on your PC and hope that its disk controller is flexible enough to let you read in the files, or at least the important bits of them. What's truly interesting about this thing's logic, although it has a CPU, and a ROM and some program memory. I think it's got about a megabyte of program memory to work with. Most every other function on its logic board is accomplished through the use of F FPGAs or field programmable gate arrays, which are basically blank slate chips filled with transistors that can be programmed to perform a certain purpose. Everything from the core system logic outside of the microcontroller to the video controller is all implemented in FPGAs, which is a very interesting approach and probably one that came at a significant cost savings for Brother Industries. Let's go ahead and try this thing out and see what all it does. Here's the little monitor hooked up to the typewriter word processor thing. This is a little no-name monitor made by some Chinese company for Brother and it has some high voltage issues. I can definitely hear some arcing over from time to time I don't know if it's just dirty inside or if there's actually something in, in the process of breaking down, but the brightness and contrast controls are definitely dirty. This little monitor has paper white phosphor, although some of them have an amber display or even a green one. 
and it does have some graphics capabilities. Now electrically I don't know to what standard it's built, but some of these that I have played with in times past would function when hooked up to the original IBM text adapter in a PC or XT class system from IBM. I would imagine that since some of these typewriters and word processor things do support graphics that they're really nothing more than a uh, slightly modified, their display hardware is nothing more than a slightly modified IBM text adapter, similar to maybe what a Hercules adapter was back in the day, which used the IBM monitor but added the capability for high resolution single color graphics. Despite this thing's rather modest hardware, after initializing the printer, it does boot up within seconds. Working. Certainly makes enough noise. And then it puts up a home screen with all of the options that you're allowed to choose. And this particular machine is actually pretty fancy. It supports word processing, spreadsheeting, an address book, templates, a simple typewriter that lets you type a line of text and when you strike a carriage return it gets printed onto the paper, communications to bulletin board services over an external modem attached to the serial port, file management, disk application which lets you format disks and stuff, a little more on that later, an automatic letter layout, and perhaps the most impressive one of the bunch is the desktop reference which contains a crude anagram generator and a thesaurus and a dictionary and things like that. The disks that these things take are usually some proprietary low density type. Brother was fond of using a 240 kilobyte format. I have found that you can usually get away with using conventional high density PC disks, at least for testing purposes on these things, although sometimes you have to hit them with a bulk eraser because the pre-formatting tends to confuse the floppy disk controller in the typewriter. Alright, so here's a little demonstration of the thing in action. Let's go ahead and choose the word processing option. And when I do, it'll hit the disk drive. Now, interestingly, this thing seems to be happy working from a conventional pre-formatted 1.44 megabyte PC disk, a three and a half inch floppy. So I guess we'll see what happens with that. Now sometimes the things displayed on this little screen are not entirely clear. Like that black bar there actually has the word new text and an asterisk printed in reverse video, but it's not at all clear. At least it's not to my eyes. So we'll go ahead and make a new text document here. And it comes up with a sort of uh, GUI editing environment that almost looks like a hybrid between DOS WordPerfect and, I don't know, something else. And it gives you the option to have a font, it gives you bold, underline, strike through, italics, and a bunch of other options, including the option for a dictionary, numlock key, things like that. So anyway, I'll just do a little bit of typing here, and I'm not terribly used to this keyboard, so hopefully I won't make a simply horrific number of typos, but here we go. Hey, look at that, that's not too bad. Now it doesn't always keep up perfectly, I can type faster than it can process, and in particular, if you were to um, go ahead and backspace something and hold down the backspace key, because the keys do repeat, it won't actually record the backspacing action until you get off the key or until it moves up a line, so its approach to storing text and handling text processing operations is a little bit lazy. Anyway, I'll type a few more things here. Don't know how well you can read any of that. But then I'll go ahead and I'll hit the menu key and I'll choose to go ahead and save this file. And it takes a look at the disk there and I'm just going to call it something like, uh, I don't know, that's probably as good as anything. You're limited to uh, an eight character name and it'll go ahead and save the file. Either that or make me look like a stupid person and give me an error. But then I've recorded that file and I can hit the menu key again and I can actually quit the word processing routine. I already saved that file so I'm going to say okay to that. Look at the spreadsheet. The spreadsheet's just exactly what you'd expect it to be just has a row and column display and again anything that's displayed in reverse video is kind of hard to read all those column and row headers and things like that oh beep yourself anyway 
There's the address book, and I haven't got anything to put in there, but it, you know they all work the same way. It gives you the prompt to make a new file and all that good stuff. Let you specify Mr. and Mrs., last name, first name, telephone, fax, title, company, address, city, state, and zip. I'll go ahead and break out of that. Templates, the typewriter. The typewriter lets you type a line of text. Anyway, when I hit the carriage return, the printer will go ahead and operate, and you can hear it. Asked me to insert paper. So obviously it's got a paper detector on it somewhere. Anyway, that's how the typewriter function works. Now there are some options that I can't take, like if I try to take the communication option, it tells me, after making a beep sound, that the modem is not connected. Press any key to continue. File management, that would let me look and see what I've got stored on the disk. And in this case, there's the file that I created called UXW Bill. There's 1,457.1 kilobytes remaining on my disk. And I can select a file and press menu to take some kind of action. Or I can simply cancel it and return back to the home screen. And then the last thing I want to talk about the desktop reference gives you some idea of this thing's crude graphics capability. And in particular, there's a word reference, a jumble option, which is a crude anagram generator, and user dictionary maintenance, or an option to go back to the main menu. Of course, I find anagrams entertaining, so I guess we'll play with that option a little bit. All right, so here I am in the jumble function. We'll put a word in there, use typewriter. That seems like a good choice if I'd spell it properly. <laughs> Then I press return. It asks me how long the words that are jumbled should be. I'll say five characters. It says working. And then over there on the right hand side of the screen, it comes up with a list of possible jumbles using the letters from the word typewriter. So there it is, the typewriter that wanted to be a computer.